I am willing to bet, all right, as we begin this very special episode, first off, it's episode 60, which is cool, but even cooler than that is the group of guys that I get to chat with, but even cooler than that, I think this is the Guinness Book of World Records record for the fastest a podcast date has ever been picked because, okay, not even 24 hours ago, I don't think at this time, like literally, like I messaged these guys and, and let me give the backstory to the listeners. Uh, my wife and I were driving home yesterday and I listened to the newest uh, episode that they had posted on the Reformation. And I said to my wife, I'm going to message them when I get home. Let's pick a date in the next couple of weeks. Well, that happened last night. And then now in front of me, these three amazing friends and brothers in Christ, uh, the Matter of Theology crew is here. Gentlemen, it's good to see you, <clears throat> and I and I appreciate this opportunity uh, oh so much. And as I've mentioned to you before and on other shows and stuff, when we recorded on your guys' platform, it was one of the best uh, podcast experiences I've ever had. And um, you know, even my wife acknowledged that. She just said when I came upstairs, it just looked different. You know, it was a it was a good feeling, and we just clicked really well. And so I'm thankful for your friendship, and I'm thankful for. Uh, the chance that Josh and you guys, you know, you all kind of welcomed me in. And here I am. I'm wanting to do the same with you guys. So uh, why don't you take a moment and just introduce yourselves, uh, give a give a quick overview of who you are, what you do, and what brought you here. Then fast forward to this January, <clears throat> I said, well, let's just put a podcast together. So I uh, got with Chris and uh, another guy at our church and you know we sat down to, to record some stuff and uh then josh came along and we kicked the other guy out and and, and brought josh in. <laughs> so no, we didn't. No, we didn't. <laughs> nick we love you no we didn't that, that's true that's true no, uh our, our other host had uh you know uh, family things and, and career stuff and church stuff that, that was way more important. And, and he's, it, it's good things. It's very good things. Uh, <laughs> but Josh and I had connected through, uh, through another guy. I was on his podcast and I invited him to be guests, uh, on my podcast. And so, uh, the friendship just took off and, and just made him a co-host and, you know, we've been doing it golly, uh, a couple months now, uh, the three of us, and it's 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 been enjoyable you know we love it yeah next <laughs> take it chris <laughs> <laughs> so before before we went live uh uh drew was was coughing up a storm and now now it's josh's turn so that, well i think i made josh cry right there yeah oh, i was, I was, I was, I was I, <laughs> oh my basically my eulogy he just gave it was amazing <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Take it, Chris. Come on. Get us back oh, on man. My, my name is Chris uh, uh, AG or Drew. Uh, Drew and I live uh, li live here in uh, north of Metro Atlanta. And um, yeah, I've been, been going to church together for uh, for just over a year. And um, man, uh, just just wanted to get together and, and talk theology, talk about what uh, what God's word says, uh, period. Uh, and then how it applies to different topics uh, in and through our lives. So, uh, so I'm uh, married with, uh, with with one little guy. Uh, I know I'll go ahead and tell you that Drew is uh, uh, married with a uh, with a little guy on the way. On the way, uh, he didn't right. mention that. That's true. Right. I should have. Oh, I'm such I'm such a terrible husband and future father. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> Your wife will let you know. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So so there you go. That's 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 me. All right, Josh. All right. Yeah. My name is Josh Loftus. I uh, was just actually searching chat room forums and I stumbled into this one. So I don't really know if anybody <laughs> here. I, just, <laughs> I don't know what's going on, <laughs> but I have the same hat as one of the guys here, which is amazing. Um, we like, come on in. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> these look like upstanding fellows. Let's <laughs> let's see where this combo goes. No, now, um, yeah, my name is Josh. I'm from uh, the Seattle area. Um, been uh in and out of ministry for a lot a lot of time uh, uh 
been in pastoral ministry. Uh, biblical counseling is actually my background, so I'm kind of mostly into that. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, Drew Drew kind of gave us the uh, gave, gave the rundown. Uh, I was a fan of the podcast, and then I had him on mine, and then he had me as a guest on his, and then I was a surrogate like podcast host for a while, and now I'm on the bankroll. So <laughs> here we are, <laughs> the big fat bankroll the that is Matt <laughs> Theology Podcast. Yeah. Just, coming, just for that, you get a raise. That's right, baby. Yeah, I'll take it. Let's do it. Yeah, so, yeah. One, one of the things that Josh will say is he's like, hey, you guys get the emails. Just send me the checks. That's right. That's right. Send you all the emails. I'm just here for the money. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> at least he's up front about it, right? Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, sure. yeah I am. I, at be least like one I'm of those honest. guys that tries to like do it sneaky. But if you're just up front about it, you know, yeah. <laughs> there is no qualms about why I am here right now. Yeah. <laughs> That's a joke. So just to kind of give a heads up, this will be the tone. Very relaxed and very, you know, because I I don't, I'm just to let our listeners know, uh, the last time when we got together, uh, we honestly, we had a great time. Mm -hmm. Um, Not only did we discuss good theology and and we we had uh, Christ-centered discussion and things like that, but we were able to connect and we were able to laugh and we were able to uh, enjoy each other's company. And since then, we've kept in touch and and we Mm -hmm. talk a lot. Um, We have the same love for energy drinks. And so that, you know, naturally brings us to the bang is the unofficial official sponsor. That's right. That's right. These two podcasts, I would be willing to say. Yes. Um, Yes. But but we had a really good theological conversation. And so then since that, um, you guys have started uh, just talk about your, your new endeavor on the on the podcast, the Reformation series. What's that all about? Yeah, so really, uh, once October hit, you know, October is Reformation month. Uh, so we just took the entire month and said, well, we're just going to dedicate every show in October to the Reformation. You know, what led up to it, the kind of the key figures in it, uh, the legacy of it, how it's continuing today. You know, uh, you, you know, first you had the Puritans that kind of continued it. And then, you know, you had Jonathan Edwards in, in America with the Great Awakening, you know, all the way through to Martin Lloyd-Jones, mm-hmm. uh, you, you know, to uh, so, some modern, we would say, Puritans today or followers of Puritanism, which would be uh, probably MacArthur, Lawson, uh, you know, the, Joel Beakey. Oh, yeah, right. you can't forget Joel Beakey, that's for sure. Ma- Matthew um, Robinson with Media Gratier and, oh, and right. all, yeah. all their work and yeah, yeah. John, yeah, yeah, yeah. John Snyder, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So so we just the the whole month of October was Reformation Month. So that's that's kind of how it got started. We are going to play a little I don't want to call it a game, because there's some seriousness behind this. Um, but what this this birth from is your guys show that I was listening to yesterday and you, somebody and I forget who mentioned it uh, tied um, th- what was going on during Luther's day to the prosperity gospel of today. Yeah. And Josh, it might have been you. Um, I, I, it was, I, yeah. I can't quite remember. I was, yeah, it was Josh doing it was. down the highway and trying to pay. You know. That way, was the you, one smart thing I said on the podcast yesterday. <laughs> I will claim that one. Then I definitely yeah. want to give you credit because Please. that, that one comment, Josh, is why the four of us are here right now. There wow. you go, man. Oh, oh, man. That's a lot of fresh. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah. That, that's it's all on you, buddy. It's all on you. Okay. All you right. are you earning your money. Uh, yes. The prosperity gospel teaching of today to what was happening during during Luther's day and you were basically yeah, saying yeah. that you're you're using the gospel to get something to, to get right. financial means or um to, yep. to and it's basically become an idol you know that 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 is no longer the 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 atoning work of Christ on the cross gospel that is the hey god what can you do for me gospel right. quote unquote gospel right and so my wife and I were talking and you guys even briefly talked about it we were discussing what the Reformation would look like today, because I think we need to establish is is let, let's open with this. Is there need of a Reformation today? Yes, definitely. Yes. Okay. Of course. Yeah, we all would agree that it's an emphatic yes. OK, so with that in mind, and we mentioned some of the guys already that are the quote unquote reformers of our day. Um and, and I think one of the guys, and he is passed on to glory, would be R.C. He was, Amen. Uh, yeah, he was yeah a, definitely. A, a leading one. And I think each one of us oh, yeah. could tell 
a story specifically about RC, maybe if we never even met him personally, but yeah. a story about something to deal with RC that just sticks with us. So mm-hmm. Absolutely. The guys, too. But the Reformation of Luther's Day, you guys explained, was against the Roman Catholic Church, and um, you know the the transubstantiation was the big thing, and um, and you know I, not a lot of people realize that. I, I've come to learn that um, they the there's so many things that that they were trying to reform. Um, but when I get in conversations with people and I tell them it's about transubstantiation, not a lot of people realize that. Like, they don't think that's the one that everybody was fighting. Um, you know, that, that was their, the one they were trying so hard for. So they were going after uh, the Roman Catholic Church, um, you know, paying money to, to build buildings and um, yeah. all of that system. And, you know, and I mean... I kind of like get a smirk on my face because it's not much different than what happens today. Right. No. I, right. I, I think it's just like, unfortunately the amounts that happen today are so, so much greater. And that's how we now see these guys like a Kenneth Copeland or a Jesse Duplantis or Joel Osteen. Like that's how they're able to accumulate this wealth is because we live yeah. in 2019 and people have wealth. Mm, right. So that kind of lays the groundwork of, of, you know, the Reformation of Luther's Day to the Reformation if it were to happen today. So let's start with that. So, number one, what is the, the biggest need of a Reformation? What aspect of American Christianity, and, and I know we're not going to be able to boil it down to just one thing, but let's start talking about that. What's, what's, the, um, what's the one thing that you would say you would want to reform if you, if you were the guy? If you were Luther... Nailing your 95 thesis to Lakewood, Texas church door. <laughs> what, what's, what's one on your list? Let's talk about that. Uh, I mean, I, I would, I think today in the American church, well, this is just for me, just something I see. Uh, we see a lot of, uh, not just the American church, but the church worldwide. We see a lot of people that will affirm scripture's infallibility. Mm-hmm. We see a lot of people that will affirm scripture's inerrancy even. Uh, but the issue that we see, um, the, the, the biggest issue that I see is the sufficiency of Scripture in all things. Um, and speaking of R.C. Sproul, I have a quote uh, from him, and he said, quote, I think the greatest weakness in the church today is that almost no one believes that God invests his power in the Bible. Mm. Everyone is looking for power in a program, in a technique, in any and everything except where God has placed it, his yeah. word, mm. close quote. I mean, I would say for me, that that's something uh, that I see is, is, uh, is, is, is a huge problem is the sufficiency of scripture and all things relying on what the Bible has to say. Scripture says about itself that it is God's breathed out word. I mean, uh, you want a short synopsis of what God's word says about itself. Read Psalm 19. The law of the Lord is perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that that's where I'd say it, it would need to start uh, is there with the true sufficiency of God's word. Yeah, and I mean, to, to add to that, so uh, <coughs> the sufficiency of Scripture, because today people would affirm, like Chris said, the infallibility, the inerrancy, and they would say, hey, we believe in Scripture alone. Yeah. Well, no, they really don't, because when you get down to it, they believe in Scripture plus signs and wonders, right? Plus plus these miracles, plus my feelings attached to it and how it uh, how it brings me, you know, to this understanding of whatever. Um, but so so really they're not sola scriptura. They're they're sola plus, right? Which isn't sola at all. But they right. will claim it to be, but it's not. Right, right. Yeah, it's the the yeah the, the sufficiency of scriptures, the the centrality of scripture as a whole mm. in churches is lost today. Because, mm. um, and I agree with Chris uh, and Ag is that yes, the the infallibility and the the uh, inerrancy of scripture is usually what will be agreed upon. But you know, and and this is this is one of the reasons why I really appreciate biblical counseling is because what it does it has as its focus the 
the the need of scripture, the need of the gospel, and realizing that the problems that we have in our society today, both in just our culture and in church, ultimately are spiritual problems. Yes, there are physical problems out there, of course, right? But 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 our culture needs the gospel. Our churches need the gospel. Our homes, right? Our homes need the yeah. gospel. We need the gospel, right? And that is the only thing that actually brings true and lasting change. It's not just uh, behavior modification, right? Mm. Uh, so you need it needs scripture. It needs to be sufficient. It needs to be all in all. It needs to encompass every aspect of your life. And every time you think you're doing something, uh, your motives, how you think about how to make decisions and how you get, get um, how, how you get your comfort ultimately must come from the roots of the gospel that is mm-hmm. only found in scripture. So, yeah, I would say I would, I would agree uh, with both of them that, that, mm-hmm. The centrality of scripture in churches yeah. needs to be that's where the battlefield is right now. I I, I think. Yeah. Well, look so, at look at the reformers. Look at uh and and starting with the quote unquote pre-reformers, uh, uh Wycliffe and and Huss and uh, and then of course leading to Luther and and we're gonna be you know talking soon about Tyndale and Knox and uh yeah. AG mentioned the Puritans and, and all these people again it wasn't they weren't trying to revolutionize anything, it was a reform what had been deformed, uh right. what had been mm-hmm. deconstructed and destroyed by the so-called church at the time. Right. Um and, and we do see a lot of that today uh we absolutely do with the i mean and brad you said it the kenneth copeland's the kenneth hagan the jesse duplantis the joel olstein the bill johnson the you know uh, uh, all of that um it is it is getting back to the sufficiency of scripture above all that's right so so the the first place that the church needs to reform is the pulpit getting back to the centrality of the scriptures because if, if you want to uh compare and contrast let's say the reformers the, the reformers time will compare that with what was going on at Rome. Rome is sola ecclesia. They're not sola scriptura. The church alone is the rule of faith and the church will tell you what the scriptures say and how to interpret it. Now today it's sola sensum, which is the feelings are the authority and they tell you uh, what the scripture means to you. And right. then you go and apply it. But then when you get into, you know, these people, who claim to use scripture and exposit scripture from the pulpit, like the Kenneth Copelands who will twist scripture, which goes all the way back to the garden, right? That's the first thing Satan ever attacked was God's word. Uh, What you see is you see a prostituting of the gospel from Mm -hmm. the pulpit to the people for selfish gain. So the, so where must reform take place? It takes place for, well, it takes place really in two places. And Chris, Chris, you mentioned the other one. It takes place first in the pulpit with the proclamation of the gospel. And then it takes place in the home with uh, the family learning the word of God together yeah. so that they can go into the next part. And, and, the, and the, the pulpit teaches teaches the gospel so that the congregation can also uh, live out this next part, which is uh, obedience to what the scriptures actually say, because we have a lack of obedience as well. Uh, no one, no one wants to pursue uh, pursue personal holiness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, well and, and we've, oh, got this, ahead, we've got this. In in some ways, we are way worse off than we are today, right? Because in the in the days of the Reformation, one of the main reasons it needed to happen is that the people did not have the Word of God in their own language. Right. They were having to rely on the corrupt church to tell them what the Bible had to say. And they weren't able to fact check. Right. And even some of the the, the bishops and papists, they didn't even speak Latin. It was just what they learned. And then they regurgitated it. Right. Well, and the Latin Vulgate was, 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 was not, not, not pure at all. Uh, And, and Josh, you said something that, uh, that, that just, I was, I was thinking you and I were about to say the exact same thing is, you know, the, the, the whole thing, the, the reason that things reached a boiling point in the 1400s was that the, the parishioners were struggling. And I said this on our episode to survive, 
uh, and you have people in power that, that that depended on 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 the ignorance of the parishioners. And please hear me, ignorance is not a, a negative word like calling someone stupid. It's just saying you're uninformed. Mm-hmm. And they were uninformed because, as Josh stated, they did not have God's word in their own language and were relying on people who were were all they were doing was uh, using ecclesiastical gymnastics to keep people handcuffed and 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 get rich and to grow in authority. I mean, countries were handing over governments to the church. Mm-hmm. Um, and so in in going back to the sufficiency of scripture in the pulpit, um, you know, one of the things I, I think that, that keeps people accountable or should keep people accountable in the pulpit is if 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 the sufficiency of scripture is taking root at home, if the sufficiency of scripture is taking root in people's lives individually, they should keep those who stand in a pulpit uh, as shepherds accountable uh, with what they're hearing. Um, and, and, and so that, that, that's a level, that, that's a level of accountability to ensure that, that something like this doesn't happen again. I mean, you think about Josh, you said the prosperity gospel, right? We're talking about that. And then uh, the, 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 I mean, what, people like Benny Hinn have done. And, uh, you know, there was a special on, I want to say it was an inside edition or 48 hours. Uh, Justin Peters talked about this uh, recently, but showing the people that had stopped taking their medication uh, and, and sowing a seed of faith and expecting healings that died. And, and so you look at, you look at what straying from the sufficiency, and I know that's an extreme example, but that's where it leads. It starts with that, that slippery slope, that slow fade and moves towards that. Um, that, that's, that's why, I mean, we as believers, as parishioners in churches, um, number one, it's how we hear God's voice. We should want to stick to scripture, but then number two, uh, it's a way to ensure that we aren't being led astray. Um, <laughs> By, by those who are who are leading, and that's that that's a big responsibility, but it's one that we're all called to. So, I'm glad that you guys all said scripture because my answer was scripture, also like biblical literacy. Like people just don't know mm. the Bible, and yeah. yeah, I think with and I can speak on your guys' behalf too. Like what we're trying to do is to get people in their Bibles, you know, is to is to point them to scripture, you know, mm. and it always is so like. It's kind of humorous to me, like guys like us, guys that would identify in the, uh, the the reformed camp. There's exceptions, of course, but we're always trying to point people to Scripture, and we're always trying yeah. to point people to Christ, and 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 very rarely are we pointing people to us. Like it, that's not. Right. Wait a minute! I thought we were supposed to be pointing people to Calvin. <laughs> or that. <laughs> Hold on! I've been doing this all wrong. Oh, I gotta make some phone calls. <laughs> It, yeah. yeah, everything I told you. Yeah, forget it. Forget all of it. We're gonna start over. <laughs> I mean, you, Josh, I love you, Josh. You don't worship Calvin. Is that what you're saying? I may or may not. I mean, I may or may not have his busk above my bed, but I don't think that means that <laughs> some candles lit, maybe some incense. Because I mean, you're, if you're a Calvinist, yeah. it you know you, you worship Calvin. That's right, right. Oh, man-made, yeah. man-made yeah. doctrine. So exactly, yeah, yeah. No, I I missed that train. Hold on, I will <laughs> I will get the first I'll, I'll get the first ticket to that train. Let's do it. But but overall, and that that is a that is a fun aspect of some of the things <laughs> that we've all heard as, in the Reformed camp. We're always trying to point people to Scripture, and mm-hmm. and that is anytime that I'm in a discipleship opportunity, it's scripture, 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 yeah. scripture. It's, you know, right. I, I, I don't, um, I don't bring inst- Calvin's Institutes with me and I'm like, Hey, new believer, we're going to work through this and, and let me know how it goes. We'll, we'll, we'll you know, it's like 1600 pages and it, you know, that's no. right. Um, Call me when you're saved. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me know how it works out. I might never see that guy again. Like he would avoid yeah, you, me if I saw him yeah. in public places. Yeah. Like, there's that guy that gave me that book. But scripture, I so, read so that. knowledge of scripture, and I think we all touched upon it. Like um, scripture, just very clearly scripture mm-hmm. in in the pulpit, in the home, yeah. in the personal mm-hmm. life. 
Um, yeah. the, the motivation for holiness, the, the, right. that's our all sufficient means of hearing from mm-hmm. God, not seeking some sort of quote unquote far off revelation or experience or, you know, whatever you want to call it, but, but pure scripture and a, and a love for scripture. I, I would agree. I think that's where we start. The question that I have and, you know, and is, is what else do you want? Right. Like, like what else, if, if we believe scripture is authoritative, if we believe it's an Aaron, if we believe it is actually the breathed out words of the creator of the cosmos mm-hmm. himself, if you hold that, if you hold scripture to that level, what else is there to go to that is going to give you what you need? Right. right? There is no, there is no amount of worldly wisdom there is no amount of 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 like like Sproul was saying programs or steps or right. you know what else do you want? You have been given such a gift in that you have have the revealed word of God in your hands. That's something the people in the Reformation they didn't have. Right, right. They don't have it. Right. There is nothing else that there's nothing else that we should want. It's well, I mean, so, today it's so we have more revelation today than any other time in history. There is no excuse. There's no excuse no, at all. There's not. No, no, no. Yeah, and that's and that's the main difference is that we have the Bible. So in in, in many day in many ways, a reformation is even more needed now because we have the resource and we still don't look at it. <laughs> we still turn away, right? It's like giving somebody the medicine, the cure for their poison, and saying, "Here, it's right here. Take it." And they're like, "But you know, I I don't know. I'm gonna go look over here." It's like, no, it's it's literally right here. This is what you need. Take it. And yeah, we we need it today. We need it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Philip Schaff said that every uh, every true uh, what is it? every true progress in church history is conditioned by a new and deeper study of Scripture. Mm-hmm. That's good. Mm. Yeah. Yep. When I get a chance to talk with a new believer, my goal. I should say goal. My beginning steps with that person is to get them to understand scripture. Mm-hmm. Meaning, yeah. like we were just talking about, like this is God's book. Like he gave this to us, okay? Mm-hmm. We as Protestants, we believe that to be true, okay? Yeah. That's big. That's yeah, that where is you big. start from. Yeah. You grab mm-hmm. a hold of that and realize, mm-hmm. you know, th- th- this is not just a book that's got some cool stories and some advice, like treat your neighbor good. It, this is it's the very very words of god given to us and passed down from generation to generation over the blood of many many people uh, people have died giving their lives for this book so we could have it today yeah yeah well well and that's why you know when you when you're, when you're well brad i've i've been this <laughs> we have a delay no you got no you're good we do have a delay. Uh, we do have a delay. That's on my end. Sorry. Uh, the, uh, I mean, Brad, you bring up a good point. I, I've been reading like crazy, and in fact, I, 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 I didn't bore my wife the other night, but, uh, but m- maybe close to it, um, with talking uh, in detail about William Tyndale um, and all that that man went through. And it wasn't. Yes, he gave up his life. Yes, he was martyred. He was strangled. He was burned, and his body was dropped in, in into the fire as he was dead covered in gunpowder and was blown to bits. Uh, that's how much the church hated this man. Um, but what he gave, I mean, he's known as the father of the English Bible and the English language. Shakespeare mm-hmm. would not have known Eng- uh, English language without Erasmus and Tyndale. Now, now there were some big differences between the two, but he, for 12 years, left his home country lived in exile. I mean, this is this is crazy stuff this man did and went through uh, so that we could have this book and 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 to be able to hear directly from the voice of God. Um, I, I mean it's 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 incredible and it and it really does make you appreciate that uh, your Bible a lot more when you when you study that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. So do you think that People are aware of the Reformation, I, I think. Like, th- they might not know it to the level that most of us would know it at, but I think they're aware of it. They're, they would be able to give you a general answer as to what happened. Do you think 
part of the reason why there's less people that appreciate scripture is because there's so many that don't know about the Reformation. Like to to a lot of these stuff, like a lot of these stories and things that you guys are telling, like they just have no idea that this stuff happened. I mean, I would say so, because uh, what we see nowadays is we see people care less and less about history Mm -hmm. and and not just American history or world history, but church history. People don't care anymore and they can't be bothered to pick up a book and read about it. Right. So you say, well, well, do you know about what what do you know about the Reformation? And they give you some general answer. Oh, so what do you think about this person, this person, this person? Oh, well, who's that? Who's that? You know, or they'll, they'll reference a book because they know this book talks about that. But then you go in depth about that book and you really realize that they've never even read it. Uh, so uh, people today care less and less about uh, history. And what's going to happen is when you ignore history, it's bound to repeat itself. And so mm. we see it today just in a different form. We see it with different ministries just prostituting the gospel. We just call it something different, but it's really the same thing that was going on. And really th- the way we're going to combat it is not a new remedy, but it's the same remedy of ad fontes to the source, going back to the scriptures and then letting everything flow from the scriptures because every key doctrine is found in the scriptures. That's our Mm -hmm. foundation for how we know how to worship God. That's how we know who God is, who we are in relation to who God is, how we come to know God. That's how we have knowledge of saving faith, right? Special revelation. Um, So, yeah. Well, and I, I, you know, I've I've been a believer uh, 19 years this month uh, and this past year, um, there's just not even, not even, not, not even a year. I've really dug into church history. Um, you know, and, and, and AG knows this. I, uh, for, for a little bit, the second week of every month, the only books I read are church history books. Uh, and I've been stuck on the great awakening for a few months cause it's just a, it's just a little bit of a harder read, but, um, but all this month, uh, for reformation month, um, you know, we're eight days in and I, 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 I am I have a church history book in my hand all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh and and I can honestly tell you that the things that I've learned about uh about the Lord, um the things that I've learned about the what these men and these people went through, um uh you know and and it shows number one there's nothing new under the sun, uh that things keep coming around and prime example of that is, you know, the the Aryan heresy of of Christ's deity and what we see coming out of the NAR. Um how that's you know, we, we've and Josh. Josh alluded to it. Uh, we've Wait, alluded to it. There's no such thing as the NAR. Let's just make, <laughs> yeah. let's make that clear, all right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's right? so Chris. called NAR. That's, yeah. that's that's Area 51 junk right there. What do you guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sure is. Um, it, <laughs> they it, storm absolutely. Area 51 and they find the NAR. That's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Bill Johnson in there, like. Taking communion by himself <laughs> with his glasses. Chris Valentin's got to be in there too. Yeah, his and strength. I'm sure Reckless Love's playing in the background, so it'll be fine. <laughs> That's right. The spirit's coming down with a sloppy wet kiss, and it's all yeah. It's it's amazing. It's amazing. Oh, uh, anyway, all I was saying is I've st- been studying church history for uh, a lot the last uh, six day, six to nine months, and and it's it's done nothing but. Uh, make me appreciate uh, the Lord's grace and his sovereign work in my life even more. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So how do you, okay, so that's, that's an excellent observation and I appreciate your guys' thoughts on that section. So let, let's talk about maybe not so much like the, uh, the, the, the NAR Bethel word of faith, all of that stuff. Cause that in and of itself, like, I mean, that's just like, that's just a mishandling of scripture. And and that kind of goes to the first point that we made, uh, plucking verses out of context, making them say things that they don't, uh, a lack of reverence for scripture too. I think Mm, that's a good word. Um, so there's numerous things about that, but, but talk to like the happy clappy evangelical church down the street that is cool and hip and loud and they got lights and they got loud music and they got, you know, tons of people that come every Sunday, they got merchandise, they got coffee, they got all this stuff. Okay. And that church needs to be reformed. Mm -hmm. How do we approach that church? How do we go to them and say, listen, your system without calling it what it is, 
you know, how, how do we approach it in a gentle way? What would be their reformation? Man, I was going to say something, but it wasn't gentle. <laughs> <laughs> Easy now. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> Take a breath. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to defer to Josh, the gentle one. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I'll, I I'll jump in. Bro, okay. Just, uh, the culture of any organization on this planet uh, will only go as far as the person running that culture uh, or running that organization, excuse me, uh, whether that be a sports team, whether that be a business or, or, or a church. Um, you know, these guys in the Reformation, one of the things that got John Wycliffe and John, uh, John Huss and, uh, in trouble, uh, uh, William Tyndale as well, is they said, look, there's no need for the Pope. Jesus is the head of the church. Uh, so it just depends on who the head of those churches are. Number one, number two, uh, I mean, you have to, I mean, prayerfully with the Bible, uh, not using, uh, what my friend Daryl Harrison likes to call hermeneutical gymnastics. Um, I love that statement. That's fantastic. Yeah. Just thinking podcast, check them out. Uh, and, um, you know, humbly and and try to show them in scripture where 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 maybe they've they've erred in their ways and and yeah. why exegeting movies is not a good idea. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I mean, but but you have to but you have to understand something. Like if you're a part of that church, you uh, and you're going to stay there. The Bible's very clear uh, on how you're to respond. Um, you're to, you're to submit to their to their authority and leadership as far as it. Uh, now, if it goes against directly against the Word of God, then uh, you know don't don't cause revolt. Right. Don't yeah. don't be divisive, but at the same time, uh, be bold. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Josh, what were you going to say? I'm sorry. Uh, just gonna, the, the, the very prophetic Charles Spurgeon said that a time will come when instead of shepherds feeding the sheep, the church will have clowns entertaining the goats. Mm-hmm. And what we have today in our culture is a culture. It's a very individualistic culture. It's a culture that everything in my life must center around me and making me feel good. What can and the not church do for me? That. What can the church give me? Right. Right. There is a blatant and an overt consumer mentality when mm. it comes to churches today, because we have a consumer mentality in everything else. Yeah. Our restaurants, our movies, our music, our magazines, our cars, our homes, literally everything in our culture today, is, you know, specifically in America, is bent toward your personal preference. You can get things in your colors. You can get things in your fonts. You can get things in your tastes. Do you like it spicy? Do you like it not spicy, right? Um, do you like Popeye's chicken sandwiches, which are <laughs> way better than Chick-fil-A's, or do you like the... Come on, or are you doing this again? Like- Right. right. But 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 the pro- <laughs> the problem is that that has seeped into the churches and the leadership has bought into it. They yeah. see the culture around them and say, OK, you know, this church over here, they are catering to these people and what mm-hmm. they want. We have to do the same thing. And what happens is you have churches outdoing each other, one upping and one upping each other. And you have light shows and you have mm-hmm. skits and you've got theatrical presentations and you've got people singing uh, something out of Disney that it sounds horrible. Right. And <laughs> it's just what, what ends up happening is we lose scripture. We lose the reason that we are there. The reason we come to church, the reason we come is to worship the omnipotent, omnipresent person of God himself. That is why we are here. Yeah. We have, And when you don't have that, when you don't have that reverence that you were talking about, Brad, mm. when you don't have that mentality, when you come into the church building and say, look, this is the reason I am here is to be emptied of myself and to be filled with the person of mm. Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Which, and, and it, you know, it gets replaced. Yeah. And to, to, to quote, uh, to quote Dr. John MacArthur uh, in his book, uh, Christ's call to reform the church. Um, uh, you know, he, he, uh, in, in the very first part of this, he said, uh, you know, descent into apostasy doesn't happen overnight. Mm. The changes are slow and steady. Rejecting scripture's authority and priority is the first step, usually followed by a succession of compromises. Mm. Maybe we can be a little more relevant and inviting to the world. If we don't take this verse or that sin too seriously. Once the church determines its purpose to engage and attract the culture, rather than edify and equip the saints, it sets out on a path that will always lead to worldliness and apostasy. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. And then he references something that, that we've seen here. Quote, not long ago, the pastor of one of the largest churches in America told church leaders that they should not let doctrine get in the way of winning people over. Which is a particular doctrine in itself. Yeah. Right. Well, and the problem is you you win people to what you win them with, right? right. Um, and you know, a very short story. When I I was I was in a uh, I was a children's director at a church, um, and I remember having a conversation with the pastor there about how I had the belief that every sermon, every sermon that, that the job of the preacher is to find Jesus in the text and to bring the people to Jesus, right? That that the gospel is in every sermon. That is the point of preaching, right? Is to make Jesus and his gospel known. Um, and I remember the response, the response was, well, don't you think that that would get kind of dry and boring if it was in every sermon? Wow. And that right there is the problem with modern evangelical Christians today is that they have stripped the gospel away from scripture and hold it as this one time event that the gospel is for when I just get saved. And then after that, it's on Christmas and Easter. exactly mm -hmm. when we have forgotten, mm -hmm. uh, and especially those of us who are reformed, who subscribe to what we, what would be known as covenantal theology, that the entirety of scripture is meant to, point us to the person of Jesus Christ Amen. Amen. and his gospel. And that's what every sermon does. That's what every service, every Sunday should, should do. And when you don't have that, when you forget that, then theater and theatrical performance mm -hmm. takes its place. It's, it's the only other natural thing. That's right. What you, what you have is you have the church letting the world come in and then the world dictate how the church is to be run. That's what ultimately you have. The yeah. world will dictate style first, but mm -hmm. then it will demand and try to dictate substance. And that's what you see happening. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and it always happens that way. And going back to something you said, Josh, you know, Paul Washer uh, said that uh, that the initial look of the gospel is what uh, what the Lord and the Holy Spirit will use to regenerate us. But the continual look at the gospel is what transforms us into the image of Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So it, it's always, I mean, uh, Christ, what, what does Spurgeon say about a Christless sermon? He says, uh, yeah, it's one of my fav favorite quotes. I actually want it on a pulpit. It's, uh, he, he asked the question, he says, no Christ in your sermon, sir. Well, then go home, never preach again until you have something worth preaching. <laughs> it's like, ah, ow, <laughs> ow. <laughs> but it's true. Mm -hmm. What do we, you know, whether you're a preacher or not, you're, you're right. a Christian. If you're listening to this and you are a Christian, what do you have to give the hurting world that is more, uh, more beneficial and more effective than the person of Jesus Christ himself? Mm -hmm. You're hurting what, family. You're hurting. It, uh, yeah. You, you are adding poison to the medicine when you add anything to the person of Christ mm -hmm. and, and real talk guys, real talk. I have never seen a church. Uh, skit, spoof, or voiceover, or or, or mock up of any movie or song that I thought, man, you know, that was better than the original. <laughs> <laughs> That's ne it's never <laughs> happened ever in the history of ever has it happened. Christians need to stop, stop it, just stop it. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so Tell bad. us what you really think, buddy. <laughs> I'm all right, so hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Stop messing with stuff. <laughs> I just want to say Brad said it was okay if we unload. So I did. <laughs> yeah. Hey. I'm just saying just yeah, stop spoofing stuff. <laughs> talking to you, crowd. All right. I yeah. did. I gave them full authority to so mm. and I say that with all good gospel love. Mm -hmm. I do. <laughs> but isn't it like this kind of what is missing today? Like we were talking about this behind the scenes and not like these types of conversations don't happen because what what normally happens when one of us approaches somebody like I, I I always use Bethel for an example because this one happens the most. If I approach somebody who listens to Bethel, okay, and I present to them, I mean I'm not saying like, hey, I don't I don't like their haircuts. I don't think you should listen to them. Like I'm presenting to them an argument based upon scripture and their whole entire message, their system, everything. I'm presenting to them to them that argument. The response is usually well, we don't need to get all tied up with that. You know, the, the, it makes me feel good or, or you know, no, I, like that, that stuff's divisive and it just shuts down. Like they're not even willing to have the conversation. 
Mm -hmm. And I think this right here with us, you know, if you want to say it's edgy, then say it's edgy. But I think that's good. Like, like mm -hmm. that needs to happen. That 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 needs yeah. to happen. Yeah, you need to be challenged. Yeah. yeah, yeah, all of us do. Yeah, great yeah. point. That, yeah, that, that's that's a great point. That we just don't see that as mm -hmm. much anymore. You know, we don't right. we don't see the, and, I, and again, we don't see the. I mean, not that it's about, um, not that it's about numbers, but I'm willing to bet that the uh, the Wednesday night Bible study through the Book of Job. Or the Sunday morning uh, exegetical study through First Timothy is right. not getting a lot of people to attend, right. and the the convenience factor. Um, and I, I I think it was um, I was listening to the Sword and the Trial this morning, and they were saying convenience outweighs whatever is going on in the church. Mm, they that's specifically, good. we're talking about prayer meetings. Yeah. And yeah. prayer meetings, you know, lack of attendance and, and, and even lack of understanding of why that's important. But again, sure. to go back to kind of what we've we're talking about, we have created this consumeristic culture of mm -hmm. me, me, me. And so if that Bible study is not convenient to me and my schedule, mm -hmm. then it just doesn't work. Right. Right. Well, going yeah. back to something, uh, something you said. Oh, I'm sorry, Drew. Um uh, going back to something you said, uh, you know, concerning, uh, you know, con concerning Bethel and somebody who listens to Jesus culture, uh, you know, so, so some of the things that I've gotten is, is, well, what, what makes you think you know any better? Um, and, and it's not like, well, I, it's not that I think that I, I, I know better, but, but they are blatantly supporting heresy. Mm hmm it's 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 blatant and obvious and we did a whole episode on reckless love uh when we first started and um i mean it, it's not that we know better it's just you see these things and you see it fly in the face of the deity of christ you have to speak up and say something mm -hmm. john calvin said even a dog barks if his master's assaulted mm -hmm. you know w yeah. hello uh i mean we, we yeah. We, 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 we've got to stand up and, and say something uh, and, and, and yeah, we do it in love and we do so wanting those people to repent, uh, the, the Corey Asprey's, the Bill Johnson's, the, the, the Kenneth Copeland, the Benny Hinn, you know, recently, right? I mean, Brad, you did a whole, a whole couple of episodes on, uh, on what was going on with that, but, um, but it, it's it's just interesting, like you say, convenience. Uh, uh, one of the things that uh, I looked up in one of the episodes we did is if you look at all the Twitter followers of, uh, let's say, M MacArthur, Grace to You, R.C. Sproul, Ligonier Ministries, uh, you know, name name some other ones, Justin Peters, uh, you know, stuff like that. If you were to add up, it was I can't remember what it was now, like five of them. Uh, Joel Olstein alone had had twice as many followers yep as all of them added up together yeah so yeah, now thinking about convenience because what's another name for convenience another word it's just laziness yep right so when people want to be lazy you have laziness from the pulpit which is basically not teaching scripture but giving motivational speeches that that play to the emotions it causes people not to think but they come to church and they hear this message and they're moved by it, void from the gospel, and they think themselves saved. Now, let's connect this back to uh, the Reformation, uh, the sacramental system, right? When people would come to mass and they would do the sacraments and they would pray over the sacraments, right? People had no idea what they were saying. But there's an emotional aspect to it. And because people come to mass, they believe themselves saved. So it gives a false assurance. And, and really, it plays to the laziness of the person because it causes them not to actually think about what's going on. And Calvin even said it in his, uh, his letter to Charles V, the necessity of the Reformation. He said, such practices without actually teaching of what these elements are and their purpose— I mean, God never intended for such a thing. Right. Good word. Mm hmm Man. And then it's like, even when it, it's, you kind of like start to think about these things and it, and it, I don't want to say like it is disheartening uh, because we ultimately know that like Christ's church is not going to fail. That's right. Um, so we're on the winning side. Mm -hmm. But 
you know, to like look around and I mean, I'm sure in your guys' towns, well, I mean, in Atlanta, we don't even need to, but in, in our towns, like, it's not like there's just this one little corner church that is doing this, but then all the other churches are great. You know, in most areas, it's the opposite. Right. Mm-hmm. most areas it's like the 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 biblical guys like we got to go like hide in a basement somewhere and like mm-hmm. because you know how dare anybody see us you know this way because we're not doing church like all these other people yeah we don't have a slide that goes to our baptismal <laughs> <laughs> oh but we could <laughs> <laughs> it can it can be a slide down Calvin's beard, right? I mean, are you even <laughs> baptizing people then if you don't have a slide? I mean, is it even real? Take communion, take communion on the way down. <laughs> Just get it all done at once. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Get, all get, once. get service done in an hour. I got yeah. a visual of that happening, and that's pretty funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My wife and I went to uh, Washington, D.C. on our honeymoon. We are not beach people. We're not outdoorsy people, and we're big nerds, and so... <laughs> We went and did the museums, and we had a blast. I mean, just an absolute blast. And we've been back a couple times since. But uh, we went um, Sunday to Sunday, and so the last Sunday that we were there, we went to Mark Dever's church, mm-hmm. and we spent the morning in worship there and stuff like that. And I remember we parked, and it's I mean, it's like Capitol Hill, like it's like in that neighborhood. It's just it's right. wild. But this, like, we had got out of our car, and this girl got out of her car in front of us. We were walking the same direction, and she said are you guys headed to church? And we were like, oh yeah. And we started telling her a little bit about the story and she looked at us and she's like, I just want to let you know, service is normally around two hours, two and a half hours. And we were like, okay. And the look on her face, you would have thought that like, I mean, cause I, I guarantee you she's told that to people and they've just turned right back around and left. Yeah. And they were like, I ain't sitting through a two hour, two and a half right. hour church right. service. <laughs> she was, the, the, the look was probably shocked. Like real Christians. Also. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, and then I started telling her about like you know the, the impact that Nine Marks has, and 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 mm. like even that. Yeah. I mean, but yeah. but then I did like I did some research afterwards, and the average age of the member at that church is thirty one years old. Wow, and it's That's and, awesome. it, and it's I mean even the people that we, that we saw young families and 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 just you know they're packing. They have one service and they have an evening service. And they, I mean, they do warm up hymns. They do like it is a church service. It was unbelievable, but, and it was every bit of two, two and a half hours. But it was so saturated with the mm-hmm. work, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That if you weren't a Christian, or if you were claiming to be a Christian but you really weren't, you would have been sick sitting through this service. You, there's no way you could endure it, or you would have left a Christian. <laughs> yeah yeah that's a that's a very good point that's a very yeah. good point. Well, what i love about that is ephesians says that we are to make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil you know and and going back to what we were talking about earlier i mean i i i had somebody at a uh at a church say to me one time because i, I refused to play you know uh, i was leading worship and i refused to to play a, a secular song to open and uh and and spoke up as to hey i I just don't think this is a good idea um you know and 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 talked about why and that was one of my things it's like we we have people's attention people are at church they know that they're at church the word church is in the church Mm -hmm. um so why would we not take every opportunity to expose them to the living and breathing and active word of god and the gospel of jesus christ and and the response i got was well the next time they hear that song they'll think about church I'm like, that's not why we're here. That is not, that's not why we're here. We're not trying to redeem secular songs. No. <laughs> Was it welcome to the jungle? <laughs> <laughs> why you got to go there, man? Why you you go know there? where you are? <laughs> but no. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. Like, as, as, as dark, like, this is what Christ said would happen, right? There's always a remnant, right? Right. The road, it is, it is, it is narrow, right? Mm. Few go yeah. through it. Right. Yeah. So it's important to remember. And, and because I, yeah, I, 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 there are many times where, you know, I'm looking around at the churches that are around me and, you know, I, I mean, I live in Seattle, arguably the first or second most progressive city in the yeah. United States. Yep. Right. 
Um, and I look around and I see so much darkness. I see so much uh, demonic <laughs> stuff going on. And it's very easy to become disheartened. But I have to remember that Christ will always have his remnant. Mm-hmm. The gospel has never and will never go out. That's right. There will always be those faithful few. And it is always a faithful few that hold the gospel high, hold scripture high. And that is where the true work is right the gospel will always be there it will never go out um yeah. i really like again i'm gonna bring it back to spurgeon because he's he's my guy i'm sorry but uh no apologies uh, man yeah yeah <laughs> we were joking earlier about about worshiping calvin no 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 it, it's definitely spurgeon <laughs> yeah, it's definitely spurgeon <laughs> um he said that if the devil never roars the church will never sing god is not doing much if The devil is not awake and busy. Depend upon it. A working Christ makes a raging devil. Mm -hmm. When you hear ill reports, cruel speeches, threats, taunts, and the like, believe that the Lord is among his people and is working gloriously. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right? So, all of this chaos that we are seeing in our culture today with the prosperity gospel, uh, with with people putting their feelings over scripture, all of it, it is going exactly the way Christ said it would, yeah. which yeah. means, one, we need the Reformation. Mm-hmm. Semper yeah. Reformanda, always reforming, right? Mm-hmm. And two, never lose hope, because as the if the gospel is there, that is the 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 diamond on the black backdrop of sin. The black or the the the, the black or the backdrop, mm-hmm. the more glorious the gospel shines. Amen. And that is one encouraging thing about our culture is where'd you go? I'm waiting for this point. Oh, oh man, it's so good. Where'd you go, Josh? Oh, what, 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 what what Repeat what you said. It the, broke what up. You, what's the last thing you heard? It was gold. <laughs> you hung. It was like right at the point you were getting ready to I make, know. and then we were all like, ah. I'm sorry. Okay, no. So, so the blacker the background, the yeah, more yeah, the, the diamond diamond shines. shines. Man, okay, I gotta redo this. No, okay. So the blacker the the backdrop the brighter the gospel shines. So the, 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 the darker and more oppressive our society becomes, the greater the gospel is going to shine because it's going to be much more evident in the lives of ourselves and the lives of the people mm-hmm. that we are giving it to because it's going to be such a stark contrast. Yeah. And that's a good thing. <laughs> that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah. 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 So that leads to, so, so we've been talking most of the time about sola scriptura, right? Scripture as our foundation and how the church has gotten away from scripture. But now that we're bringing it back to scripture, our goal is to bring everything back to scripture. Now, what is it that we proclaim in scripture? Christ crucified, right? Like Paul says, I desire to know nothing but Christ crucified. And uh, I believe it was uh, James Montgomery Boyce uh, that he had a a radio program at one time. Uh, And I'm going to paraphrase the story, but he said that if the devil had his way, that what it, it wouldn't be that, you know, uh, pornography would be done away with. It wouldn't be that, or, or would run rampant. It wouldn't be that uh, crime would run rampant. It would be that pornography done away with. Uh, everyone would be good to their neighbor. Uh, mm-hmm. it, ultimately, we would live in the in this really nice, peaceful environment, and people would go to church, but they would never hear Christ proclaimed. Right? Mm-hmm. That would be the devil's ultimate scheme, and yeah. sadly we see a lot of that today is that Christ is not proclaimed. We have, I mean, even the cross right now is a Christless cross that is talked about. It's bring your fear to the cross, lay it at the foot of the cross. Okay. But then get what, what am I supposed to get? You get Christ. That's what they're missing. Right. Yeah. Well, and even down to the reason for the cross, Mm -hmm. right. That, that, that God was so desperate and couldn't stand heaven without you. So he sent Christ to bring you to him. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, I, and I want to be gracious, but that's a load of blasphemy. Mm-hmm. That is yeah. God is not dependent or in need of anything. The reason for the cross was that so that God's glory could be manifested through the saving of mm-hmm. damned people. Mm-hmm. 
reconciling them, those who are shaking their fist at God, turning their lives around and mm. presenting them as whole and blameless. Yeah. Mm. That's yeah. the reason for the cross. Yes. And for placing God. the judgment on his son. That's right. right. That's right. right. You, we, we have to remember that, that at the cross, God saved his elect from himself through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Paul says in Romans that we are saved from the wrath of God by God. That's the reason right. he became the propitiation for sin for that reason, yep. uh, to turn those wretched sinners into, as, as the book of Revelation says, we are now saints. We are now priests. All of us in believers are now priests and adopted children of the most high God uh, yep. with all the rights there into it. Ephesians one, read about the inheritance, the glorious inheritance prepared for the prepared for the saints because of what Christ has done on the cross and yeah. something, something else you mentioned there too, you know, bring your feelings, lay them down at the foot of the cross. Hello. The cross is empty. The grave is empty. Amen. You get Jesus, bring them to Jesus. Amen. Come Sorry. on, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we need to stop putting Christ back on the cross. Yeah, yeah. right. Like, like, like we need, we need to stop doing that. Yeah. But Todd mm -hmm. White told me that the cross <laughs> is a sign sorry. of. You said Todd White, let us laugh. Well, it's sorry. because of Todd White that you're now walking like lopsided. Okay. So like, <laughs> I, I know. I think we talked about it before, but the hand meme, like with, yeah. still, <laughs> now one leg's longer than the. Or, it you know, your still legs hasn't are gotten even. old yet to me. Like, every, every time I see it, I, I still laugh like it's the first time I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> but but I mean to that I mean Justin Peters makes a great point. There is a huge epidemic of people with one leg shorter. Yeah. Than <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> right? Who knew? My chiropractor. Yeah. But I mean, has anybody ever been at the chiropractor? One of the That's ways right. that they measure is they lift your feet up and mm -hmm. see. <laughs> anyway, but no, let's let, let's take that right because that's that's so popular right now. And if he could do what he claims he does. He still doesn't give the gospel. He still doesn't know, give the that, hope of Christ. But, well, Andy's how short. <laughs> like, how do how do more people not see that? Because I've watched mm -hmm. a lot of his stuff. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. if I ever make a like a statement about somebody from a critical manner, I want to make sure that I'm I, I see enough of it. Right. That's why mm -hmm. I watch Bethel stuff every so often to make mm -hmm. sure that like Uncle Billy didn't, you know, hit his head and now is, you know, preaching something, you know, good. Yeah. But how do people not notice that all he is doing is saying like, oh, your back hurts. Hey, let's pray for your back. Oh, hey, high five. Have a great day. Like, God loves you, man. That's all I said. God yeah, loves you. With cameras. And I mean, like all of this stuff, like how, how do more people not see this? Yeah. Well, I mean, I can't take my eyes off the dreads. So that's probably all they're looking at. <laughs> <laughs> What's yeah, amazing is the receding hairline with the dreads. I mean, oh. just like a whole, that's, that's another topic. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> I we done. I'm bald, so I can talk about these. That's things. true. You can. You can. Yeah. <laughs> In hour number two, we criticize our favorite false teacher's hairlines. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mean, you know, I see that a lot is all these people, these faith healers, which are so popular today, do all these things in the name of Christ, but they don't actually give Christ. They don't actually tell about Christ. And it's really just to bring glory to themselves for, oh, you, you need this healing? Well, come to me. I'll, you know, I'll pray for you and, and we'll get this done. You know, but it, it's completely void of Christ. So here's a question that kind of relates to some, you know, we've been talking about the Reformation and, and specifically talking about this. You know, one of the things that John Calvin asked in institutes in the chapter in the section on the power of the church, um, uh, he uh, he said this, first of all, he's questioning, and I'm, I'm going to paraphrase, I'm not going to quote exactly, but he said that, uh, you know, how could those in the Roman Catholic Church surpass the apostles in authority? You know, when compared to the apostles, they, they were nothing. Uh, the, the same thing with with guys like Todd White, Bill Johnson, Todd Bentley, you know, all these guys who are claiming to be uh, a, a capital A apostles and wielding these apostolic gifts. And so we have to ask this, this question, it's the same question that John Calvin asked about those in the Roman Catholic Church. He said, he said, so, so were they to resign 
uh, what they were doing. It wouldn't be any risk to Christ's glory, sound doctrine, or the church's welfare. Mm-hmm. And the same Gosh. goes for 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 those in our day who are propagating that that mm-hmm. that uh, prosperity gospel, that sowing a seed, that indulgences. Basically, you can go yeah. ahead and call it that. Yeah. And yeah, um, so yeah. that that's a good test, man. Is just like if yeah. they if Todd White were to stop doing that, mm-hmm. would there be any danger to the risk of Christ's glory, sound doctrine, or the church's welfare? Well, no. yeah, I mean, I mean, look, you look back in the back in the Reformation. You have you have very hurting people who yes. are who are sick, who are fearing for their souls, who have very real problems. Going to the church of the day and saying, "Help us," and the church says, "Okay, give us money." Mm-hmm. Right? They are collecting on a debt that has already been paid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? And what you have today in the prosperity gospel is people fearing for their souls, wanting to be in favor with God, wanting physical and spiritual healing, going to the church and asking for it. And the church is saying, okay, sow a seed yeah. and you'll get it. Well, that's what Joel Osteen's church does. If you call them their prayer line, give them a call and you can make a prayer request, but you have to pay for it. You have to pray, pr- pay for someone to pray for you. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah. I did not know that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> the Holy Yikes. Spirit doesn't charge for access. And we need it's already been paid. It. It's already been paid. It's, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was, I don't know. You know, I want to ask, what about once for all do you not understand? Mm-hmm. Read the book once for all. The gospel is it, it it's finished. Jesus didn't say, "Well, it's almost finished," and it's uh, for your purchase for two easy payments of nineteen ninety five. Right? It is, it is finished. Amen. It's Amen. Done. There's no work that needs to be done. Jesus didn't pay some of it; he paid it all. Yes. Oh. Yeah. So, I mean, personally, I think <clears throat> the only thing that's going to to do it to to cause a another reformation, so to speak is to have faithful uh, preachers, pastors, ministers proclaiming the word of God, you know, not prostituting it, uh, but you actually studying the book, right. its context, mm. and, then, and then preaching it faithfully. Because as long as you're faithful to the word, God will be faithful to the mission. Yeah. yeah John well, MacArthur says, take care of the depth of your ministry and he'll take care of the breadth. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. and and everyday Christians too, men, women, children, hold Absolutely. scripture high, mm-hmm. right? Hold it up. Hold the gospel yeah. as the most mm-hmm. important thing about yourself. That when you are looking at a situation and trying to figure out, look through the lens of scripture, right? Yeah. That's what's going to do it. So yeah, and and I would say, I mean, for all of us in all that we do, and th- this is hard. Do we do we always do this? No, we we're gonna fail. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are gonna falter. We're gonna slip. We're gonna backslide. We should aim for uh, this. And and so I just want to read this little lengthy, but not really. Um, uh, Martin Luther, right? We're gonna know the first part of this quote. This is uh, from him at the Diet of Worms. Uh, he said, "Unless I'm convinced." by the testimony of the scriptures or by clear reason. For I do not trust either in the Pope or in councils alone, since it is well known that they have often erred and contradicted themselves. I am bound by the scriptures. I have quote, I have quoted and my conscience is captive to the word of God. I cannot and will not retract anything since it is neither safe nor right to go against conscience. May God help me. Amen. Now, to quote, uh, to quote Dr. John MacArthur again, quote, 500 years later, faithful men serve in the shadow of these great warriors of God and work to carry on their legacy of biblical fidelity and gospel truth. Moreover, we carry on their protest, not merely against Rome, but against any system, church, or self-styled shepherd who deviates from the word of God in the life of the church. And tragically, the 21st century church may be facing greater th- threats mm-hmm. than it ever endured under Rome. Close quote. Mm. I mean, it's the it's the faithful preaching of the word that leads to that has led to every revival in church history. Yep. That's right. Well, let's end with this. I thought this would be interesting. So let's play the role of a reformer. And you are tasked with you get one person that you get to sit down and have a conversation with 
from our modern church system today. <laughs> and so we, you know where I'm going with that. So, you know, you can pick <laughs> any one of those. Um, and, and your goal with this is to point out their air. Um, and kind of like a side note, just real quickly, most of these guys, most of the Bill Johnsons, Joel Osteen's, all these guys, do you think they know what they're like? They're in air and they're just doing it because it's producing results. Like, do you like, do you think that? Um, yeah. No, I, I, here's what I think. I, I think with guys like that, they are the deceiver and they are the deceived. Um, I, I, I mean, scripture, scripture speaks to that. The, the, both the deceiver and the deceived. Uh, I, I mean, at this point, with the fact that uh, so many people, I mean, I think of Benny Hinn, for instance, and his nephew, Costi, you know, Costi has said there have been conversations, yeah. especially after the release of Costi's book, God, Greed, and the Prosperity Gospel. Get it, read it. It's an amazing book. It's an amazing book. Um, but I mean, with stuff like that, those conversations have been had. They're, they're, mm-hmm. they're, their eyes have been blinded, as mm-hmm. scripture says, uh, by, by the prince of the power of the air. Um, and, and the Holy spirit has not, not removed them yet. Yeah. That's, okay. that's my opinion. Who, so, so yeah. Yeah, then who, who's your guy? If I were a reformer, who would I talk to? Yeah. Andy Stanley. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Trailer hitch. <laughs> <laughs> If, yeah, that's really funny. Uh, honestly, it, uh, I would say Andy or Giglio. Uh, and, and, and because I know for a fact that Louis gets the gospel. Yeah. And I know for mm-hmm. a fact that, An- that Andy gets the gospel. Yeah. yeah. I, I, that he understands it, that they mm-hmm. understand it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's what what is being proclaimed from from the platforms mm-hmm. uh, and, and systems and all that fun stuff. So. I did two Andy Stanley videos out of you the did. hundred and some odd videos that I've done. There's two that are titled specifically about Andy Stanley. And then today, this guy left he one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different comments. Um they're 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 pretty interesting. Yeah, basically mm-hmm. telling me how wrong I am and um, that I'm biased. <laughs> he says my bias shows everywhere. Um Bias to what? Yeah, that's a yeah. question. What, what am I? What am I biased to? <laughs> it, it's his one statement. This is how it begins. I think it is your own bias that is showing here more than any faults Andy Stanley has himself. He is not wrong about a huge problem in today's Christian church and the culture. But I don't know what my bias is. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So, sorry, any yeah. any so any any just... person any person who calls themselves uh, a, a pastor or shepherd and stands on a platform and tells people that the Bible says so isn't good enough anymore, and that they need to unhitch their faith, and that the apostles unhitch their faith. Hello, read the Book of Hebrews. We wouldn't have the Book of Hebrews without the Old Testament. We wouldn't know who Christ is without the Old Testament. I'm not going to get into that now, but anyway. So Andy Stanley's your guy. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. I like I like that choice. That's awesome. <laughs> Josh, Josh. Oh, man, I'm still thinking. Uh, oh, that's okay. I'll go. I'll go. Yeah, go, 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 go. Okay, so I want to hear this. <clears throat> my guy absolutely would be Todd White, just because you know when I, I came from a vineyard background, and it was when Todd White was starting to become more and more popular, and we would we'd watch his videos, and we it was when. Uh, Darren Wilson, yeah, Darren Wilson was putting out uh, Holy Ghost and, and all these other uh, documentary videos, and people were eating it up. But it was right when I had just started discovering Reformed theology and actually looking into studying scripture, and it made me so mad to see the deception that he was mm-hmm. teaching and everyone else following it. Um, now the approach I would take, uh, cause I'm more of a John Knox guy, uh, would be a little more bold, Broad a little sword. more, a little more in the face, you know, confronting Mary queen of Scots and her idols. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I would, I would love to have that conversation with him. So, and I think that's why, that's why I'd want to talk to Andy though, too, Drew's as 
you know, you look at the influence that these guys have mm -hmm. and people listen to them. Yep. And that's my thing with Andy is how many churches does he have in this area? And he, he's got, he's got television shows that, that broadcast on national television, preach the gospel, mm -hmm. you know, how will they know unless they hear and how will they hear unless, unless the gospel is heralded when Paul mm -hmm. says that in Romans 10, it's, it's herald spoken, proclaimed mm -hmm. preach the gospel. You know it. I know, you know it. Nobody could grow up under your sure. dad and not know, not it. know it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I digress. I mean, so I have, I have like two things. So like, if I'm, if I'm going to do this, I'm either going to go full blown, like Martin Luther and go nail like a Bible, an ESV study Bible to the front of Kenneth Copeland's streamline jet. <laughs> I, I think you misspelled NASB. Yeah, yes. I think you did. We go again. No, he, spelled it, he spelled it right. I think he spelled it right. <laughs> no, that's right. Black standard version. Non-Arminian okay. standard Bible. Yeah, that's like second. That's like that's in the negative. Mine's the positive, right? So mine's, I, I think <laughs> William Tyndale would read it in NASB. I'm just saying. <laughs> Continue, Josh. Continue. Sorry, but if, if I if I if I wasn't feeling such such gusto, um, I would. I actually have quite a few friends that are very much wrapped up into the NAR and Bethel. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't know per se if going to the leadership of Bethel would be uh effective or not. Um, but yeah, I'd love to just I'd love to call that staff together. And just plead with them, plead to the people that are working, plead to the, plead to the common people that aren't in leadership uh, that are in that and just say, look, you are, you are, you are shortchanging yourself, <laughs> right? The gospel has so much more. So yeah, I, it would probably be, it'd probably be, be uh, uh, Johnson, um, the, what's, what's the, what's the, Valentin, trend? Chris Valentin, yeah, yeah, him, and then the Carl Lentz, that guy, uh, oh, and His Furnick. Song. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, some some Ferdy. I tell him to get off his. I tell him to get off his futon and start preaching the gospel. Well, Furtick is my, that's who I was going to pick. Honestly, I was going to ask Brad, who are you going to yeah. pick? Furtick. Because when I first like was becoming a Christian and was exposed to this, you know, YouTube Christianity. I hate to call it that, but that's just you know, Furtick was yeah. one of the first guys that I started listening to, and. He certainly wasn't exegeting the doctrines of grace every Sunday morning, but he was not where he is today. Like he's gone right. downhill and, yeah. and Quite the progression. Exactly. Yeah. So Furtick would be the guy that I would sit down with. And again, with his influence upon the culture right now, like, like the amount of people just with one 30 minute sermon or whatever it is that he pulls, the amount of people you know, I would I would just want to sit down with him and say, "Listen, man, like, do you understand? I mean, the guy went to to Southern Baptist, like, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. the foundation is down there, you yeah, know yeah. I mean? it, like, yeah. like it's there, <laughs> and he just has such a reach. It, it's just, I mean, there's elevation campuses all over the place now. Yeah, they're, you know, yeah. they're, they're these satellite places where they just show his sermons, but you know, it's it's an elevation campus, quote unquote." And his reach has just blown up and I would just love to sit down with him and just say, Hey man, what, what is, what is, what is your distaste for just preaching week in and week out and using that as God's means of drawing sinners to himself? What don't you like about that? And I would be, I, I would like to hear what is the, re what, what's the reason, you know? Like, like what is, what would his answer be? Because I think that would then you would, you would then learn a lot about him. Um, I, we, we see Stephen Furtick as like, you know, he's, he's gym guy now. Like he's buff. He's, you know, he, he wears skinny jeans and like, you know, he's, he's shooting Nerf guns off the stage and he's doing all that, that dumb stuff. Like, but again, at some point, the, the dude had it. Okay. It was, mm -hmm. it was in there. Yeah. 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 And I, I just think with him, he got a little, he got a little taste of it and he thought, mm -hmm. man, this is what I could do. Yeah. I'll buy it. No, and he's got some influences to TD Jakes and stuff as well. You know, TD Jakes is one of his big, yeah. His, one of his guys. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, he called Joyce Meyer the greatest preacher of our generation. What? And one of the code, you remember when they would do the code orange or whatever conferences? Yeah. 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 So, 
year, wow. two years ago or something like that. When he entered, he honestly, like he introduced Joyce Meyer as the greatest preacher of our generation. Mm. So that in and of itself is, you know, a whole entire separate conversation. But uh, Stephen Furtick would be my guy mm. for sure. Well, that brings up a good point. Uh, also to something I was just thinking about while we were talking is, you know, so, some may ask the question, well, what do I do? Like I'm fired up. Like I'm, I'm, I'm fired up about this. Like, how do, how do I respond? What, you know, uh, what do I do? Uh, you know, and I, I would just say that something I've learned the hard way, um, l- learn from me, learn from us, I guess you could say is, um, stand for the truth, mm-hmm. preach the truth, live for the truth, uh, be a lover of the truth. Um, don't, don't, don't learn the hard way in that way, please. Um, and if you're going to reach out and, and warn people about the dangers of some of this errant theology that we see, um, really go after the, the, uh, the teaching before you go after the teacher, Great point. Um, Great point. especially especially if you're not going to uh, follow follow what Scripture says on how we are to approach people um, in that way, whether that be Matthew 18, uh, if it's someone inside your church, if someone outside the church, yes, we are called. Uh, Titus uh, 1.9 tells us that we are to rebuke publicly, um, but but we start with the teaching. Yeah. We start with the, with the heretical or heretical teaching, um, and while, while making inroads into those conversations, like we said, if we were going to sit down with one person, who would that one person be? You know, we're not saying we would do it, you know, publicly. Uh, but if it came to that, if it needs to be that, we do it in, in love. We we call for repentance. We pray for repentance. We um, we we express the love that we have for those people. We don't hate them. Yeah. Um, we love the sinner, hate the sin. Uh, God is the only one allowed to hate the sinner uh, <laughs> because he's holy and we're not. Uh, well, yeah. An aspect and- of what people. Oh, I'm sorry, Josh. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was just gonna say, yeah, yeah. Basically, don't don't be cagey. Right. I mean, there's the greatest oxymoron in the world is a prideful or arrogant Calvinist or reformed yeah. person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Like, remember, as you're talking to these people, they are you are just as much in need of the same truth and gospel as they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the only reason the only reason that you understand the truths of scripture and understand that what you are hearing is error is because of the grace of God revealing it to you. You are not on an intellectual high ground. You're not on a theological high ground. You didn't do anything to get yourself there. So remember, as you are talking to these people and explaining scripture, that someone had to do it to you first. That's right. Amen, brother. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good word. I don't even remember what I was going to say. I was so focused on what you were saying there. Uh. <laughs> Is it the eyes? That's <laughs> right. That's right. So I'm sorry. Yeah. Drew, do you got anything you want to close with? Uh, man, it's when we talk about the need for a reformation today, I know a lot of people are going to, they're going to want to be gung ho, right? They're going to want to mm-hmm. be on the edge of their seat and they're going to go, going to go off firing, you know, their, their theological shotguns at people. And just like these other two guys have said is you don't need to do that. Right. Mm-hmm. No, you don't. The, the first thing that you need to do before, before you ever do anything like that is you need to shut your mouth and you need to make sure that you are in scripture and that in that your soul is taken care of. Because once you do that, once you, once you dig into the word for yourself and then you, you saturate yourself in the word and in prayer, you're going to have a different approach, right? right. Because, because the nailing of the 95 theses wasn't a protest. That's right. It was a start that way. It was a call for a discussion because yep. that was the bulletin board of the day. It was a call for, hey, let's sit down and let's talk about these things uh, at a scholarly level. So, so if you, so, so don't say we need to revolt and we need to we need right. to reform and we need to go kick down doors. No, you no, don't. No, no. Okay. You, first, you need to be in the Word and you need to be in prayer and you need to saturate yourself in that. That's right. And exactly. then. What you need to do is you need to re- reach out to some people. Don't reach out to 10 people, right? And then just, just start, you know, getting cagey, right? But reach out to one <laughs> just person. Just copy and pasting Romans 9. Just- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously, seriously. <laughs> but reach out to one person and say, man, I, I see where, where you're 
you know, you're posting this or you, you kind of believe this, you know, talk, talk with me about kind of your thought process through yeah, that, talk about that, you know, and, and it begins to take more of a discipleship role than a, a revolt uh, where That's people right. think that you're just an arrogant jerk wanting to just, you know, cut people down with your, your theological sword. Well, and look, yeah. st- standing for truth, it, it makes enemies. So yeah. y- you, it will. you, yeah, you do you have absolutely to be will. Sure. Yes, yeah. right. you, you very well may not be someone who's a theological jerk wielding his John Knox broadsword and just trying to cut, you know. Uh, but but if you're if you're labeled that way because you're standing for the truth, mm-hmm. um, that, that then so be it. Still respond in love. Don't react. And and remember the words of Peter: we we're ready to give defense for the hope that we mm-hmm. have with gentleness That's and right. the first part of that verse is after we've mm-hmm. sanctified christ as lord in our hearts mm-hmm. i can't remember who said this but they said before i take god to man i need to go to god with man or something like that yeah like yeah. always be in prayer before you're mm-hmm. before you do right that. Yeah. right right if, if you're going to be called out on something you say make sure it's because of what you're saying not not how you're saying it mm-hmm. right yeah. right the gospel and the truths of scripture are hot enough you don't need to be adding hot sauce to it that's right, right. <laughs> what you're going to be saying is going to be offensive enough. Mm-hmm. Say it in love. Say it with patience. Say it with grace. Say it softly. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and let the spirit do what the spirit does. Yeah. Yep. And, and and I want to encourage people this because now say you have right, you have jumped out of your seat and you've you've kicked doors in right. Uh, Everybody's a heretic. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Everyone's a heretic, right? <laughs> I will tell you, there have been times in my life, even even recently, right, last month, where I had to humble myself and go to a brother in Christ and say, man, I sinned here. I was wrong. You know, don't be afraid to do that. Yeah. You know, Humble yourself, especially if you know this, you know, the person is a brother in Christ. There's just some things you disagree with. And some places they could if they continue on that way. It, they could end up, you know, in apostasy, right? And you don't want that. But you know that this person, they're a believer, go lovingly talk to them and, and, and try to bring them back. But use scripture as your foundation. Uh, don't deviate from scripture and present Christ. Mm-hmm. Let everything be be saturated in Christ. Yeah. Well, and Drew, I'm sorry. I was really mad. I didn't text you back. I forgive you. <laughs> 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 Yo, <laughs> we got it out here it's okay <laughs> yeah nothing like doing it on live tv no yeah. it, it was really because you it got wasn't the same me. hat i got <laughs> hey you just you you modeled it so well yeah i just i had to get it it's good stuff i think uh you kind of made a comment about um, Chris, I believe it was you about people. Um, if you're standing firm on truth, people are not going to like you. Like, yeah. There's going to be people that call you names and things like yeah. that. And we can't let that t- you know, go to heart. I think a, a, a check system to make sure that we are standing firm is, is this right here. Like we have guys that are close to us that would come to us and say, Hey, listen, like you are erring in your theology or you are erring in your delivery or mm. so, so though having those guys in your life to call you out on stuff and to receive their counsel um, that's really good. I, I think anybody who is engaged in this battle, um, even, I mean, I mean, just, you know, we're not supposed to be Christians by ourselves right. and it's, it's even more important when you step out and you start to do theology. I hate to say it that way because we all should do theology, but the fact of the matter is there's some of us that have taken on, uh, the task of it that, that many would not, but we need to have that sense of community with one another and, and to be able to, to receive counsel from mm, others right. and give counsel to make sure that you know we are not erring, that we are not being right. cagey, that we are not being so, yep. you know hypercritical and judgmental and and, and mm. getting that uh, with gentleness and love aspect of First Peter three. Mm. Yep. Yep. Amen. Well, guys, uh, that was fantastic. That was uh, that was a good chat. I really appreciate that. Yes, Why well, don't you, you. Uh, let everybody know where you're at and where we can find you, um, stuff like that. Yeah, we are on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, anywhere you get your podcast, really, except for we're not on YouTube. We don't load anything on YouTube. So basically, wherever you get your podcast, except for YouTube, we'll be there. And you search just Matter of Theology? Yeah, Matter of Theology. Okay. 
where are you guys most active on? Would you say Instagram? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have a Twitter, but it's very rarely do we get on it. I mean, I'm not a big Twitter guy. Uh, but my face a bit. Yes, my space. <laughs> Jared, we miss you. <laughs> but no, my space was cool, man. I remember those days. It was because I didn't have a college email. I was in school, but I couldn't get on Facebook. So my space was a thing. Too. Yep, yep. But no, we we are most active on Instagram and we have a Facebook group as well. We have a Facebook group and a Facebook page. Okay. Um, so. Yep. Well, any closing thoughts as we sort of wind down? <sighs> <sighs> Simper referenda for all of us individually yeah. and collectively. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I love to draw that out to say we, we are to, we are reformed and to always be reforming to the word of God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's good. That's good stuff. Well, guys, uh, thank you. I, again, thank you, uh, man. we, uh, I'm submitting our, our claim to the Guinness book of world records as the fastest, put together podcast episode yeah. yeah hey you guys want to do a show yeah when tomorrow okay tomorrow, I, yeah. know. I was like oh my gosh these guys are serious they want to do it tomorrow <laughs> he was he was he was just gonna throw it out there just to be nice he's like oh crap they weren't gonna do it four guys three cities in less than 24 hours four guys and thank you technology just the, printing press, the printing press did it for the reformers Technology and so, I think this makes it like podcast four for me now. So it's just that's okay. Yeah. We're all it's oh my just, gosh, that's right. Just <laughs> yeah, Josh is busy on the podcast platform. Yeah, yeah, I need to make some money off it. I don't know how. I'm not that smart, Brad. We need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, you don't want to know how I make money. Off. I have like five jobs. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not just. <laughs> I'm not going. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Wait till we're not live. Sanctification (laughs) is real. It's real. It's real. It's real. (laughs) Well, guys, I personally thank you very much, and I know uh, the crowd as well um, says thank you. Also, Um, no, we thank you, man. I know you guys. Yeah. um, It's it's been a it's been a joy to chat with you, Uh, and I look forward to doing this again. Absolutely. Anytime, man. Yeah. All right, it. guys, I'll cut you loose. All right. Happy Reformation Month. That's right.